welcome to this video. In this one we're going to be looking at developing experimental skills and in particular we're looking at the requirements of international GCSE in chemistry. This is our example. So this is taken directly from the specification and don't forget this applies to biology and physics as well as chemistry. So the best way to develop experimental skills is to embed practical investigations in teaching or theory. Okay, do you have to do the practicals? Well, in recent weeks I've been in touch with one of the subject officers at Edexcel and this is the response I got when I asked the very same question. So it needs to be remembered that some examination questions assume that students have detailed knowledge of practical techniques and skills. There is evidence that students perform better in written examinations when they've had more direct experience of practical work. And going on, Ideally, students would carry out all the embedded practicals either individually or in pairs or in groups. If this is not possible, for example, if um, a student is home educated, then a less good alternative, but it's still possible, would be teacher demonstrations or watching suitable video clips. So it is still possible. Well, we're going to look at particularly at this practical, this is just an example I've, I've selected. It's a practical to investigate the effect changing the surface area of marble chips and changing concentration acid on the reaction. We're going to concentrate here on surface area. It's worth noting that of the possible marks in your chemistry exams, about 20% will be given to questions designed to find out whether you have some important laboratory skills or whether you know about these experimental skills. Now here are the experimental skills. A bit of a list. I'm not going to read through these because we're going to see one, each one individually in a few minutes. And there's some more over here. So there's nine experimental skills that are listed in the, the edit. This is the Edexcel International GCSE specification. Right. So here's our practical. To investigate the effect of changing the surface area of marble chips on the rate of reaction between marble chips and dilute acid. So, the first experimental skill is this. Solve problems set in a practical context. And this very much is a practical context. But what's the problem? Well, the problem we're going to investigate is how does the surface area of a compound affect the rate of reaction with an acid? And in particular, we're going to use marble chips. Marble chips are calcium carbonate. So we're going to add marble chips of various sizes observe the effect on the rate of reaction. So we're changing here size of marble chips. Second experimental skill needs to know apply scientific knowledge and understanding in questions with a practical context. What I put in here, I put in the equation. So calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to give calcium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. We're looking here at the rate. Remember up here the description of the experiment, the rate of reaction. What is it? Well, the rate of reaction is the speed at which amount... Oh, it disappeared. That was magic, wasn't it? The rate of reaction is the speed at which the amount of reactants decreases or the amount of products increases. Now, in order to measure the rate, we need to be able to measure something. Hmm. Well, in this experiment, we're very fortunate. Because look, look at the equation. We've got carbon dioxide being given off. So looking at the equation, we can see the carbon dioxide is given off. We could therefore record the change in mass of the flask as our, as our measure of rate. And that's a jolly useful way of doing it. Right, number three, before we start doing the experiment, we've got to identify independent, dependent and controlled variables. Now many people find this a bit of an issue. Let's look at this carefully. When we're talking about the independent variable, we're talking about what we're going to change. What is it you're changing in the experiment? Now in this experiment what we're changing is the size of the marble chips. So the size of marble chips is our independent variable. Our dependent variable is what we're going to measure. And in this experiment what we're going to measure is the mass of the conical flask as the reaction progresses. Now control variables are what we're going to keep the same in every single experiment. Okay, and here it'll be things like the concentration of volume of acid, the mass of marble chips, and the temperature. So hopefully now you understand the independent variable is what you change, dependent variable is what you measure, control variables are what you keep the same. Right, so I hope you got that now. 
Number four, or experimental skill four, devise and plan investigations using scientific knowledge and understanding when selecting appropriate techniques. So can we use our scientific knowledge and understanding to plan a good experiment? Well, here's the experiment we're going to be doing. I'll give you more details in a minute. Look at what we need. We need to have, over here, a conical flask. Because we're measuring mass, we need a top pound balance. We need cotton wool. Now, cotton wool is important because cotton wool will allow carbon dioxide to escape. You could say, why have you know, why haven't it there at all? Well, the acid may splash during reactions, so it's a safety thing really. Keep cotton in there. Why are you not using a rubber bung? Well, a rubber bung, the pressure will build up and eventually pop out the top. So you have to use cotton wool. Hydrochloric acid of known concentration and marble chips. Now these are things, these are independent variables. We're going to be changing these. We're going to change the size of these. We're going to have some small ones and mediums and large ones. But overall, the mass will remain the same. We're going to have the same mass of small chips as we have of medium chips as we have large chips. Safety. So important. I'm so glad you asked me that. We've got to pause and think for a moment. Before we do the experiment, what are necessary safety precautions? Some of these are obvious, some are not. Obvious one, wear safety glasses, hence the symbol here. Avoid contact with chemicals. This is why I said we need cotton wool in the top there. Not only does it allow cotton products to out, but it also stops any splashing. And thirdly, be aware of glassware. We don't need breakages, but if there are breakages, be aware that there is a risk there from cuts from the glass. So be aware of safety. So number five, demonstrate or describe appropriate experimental investment methods including safe and skillful practical techniques. We are skillful aren't we? So here's the method. Okay, I'm not going to read through it. I'll leave you to pause the video if you want to read through this. But this is how we would carry out the investigation. And there's a bit more of the method there as well. Okay, Basically what we're going to be doing is adding acid to the marble chips, carbon dioxide will be given off and we'll be recording the um, change in mass from the top on balance every 30 seconds. Right, next. Having done the experiment, we need to be able to make observations and measurements with appropriate precision, record these methodically and present them in appropriate ways. So here's our results table. Left-hand column here, we've got time from 30 to 150 seconds and here we've got change in mass of conical flask. We've got change in mass for small chips, medium chips and large chips. Why is it negative? Well, because we're losing mass. We are losing mass because the carbon dioxide is being given off. This is why our mass is negative. Okay, now having got the data, we then may decide to plot a graph. So here we have the graph for the experiment. Left-hand axis, we've got um, change in mass conical flask. Bottom axis, time in seconds. I'm going to discuss how we mark the graph in just a second. But here you can see, first of all, um, notice how the graph for small chips has a much steeper slope to start with. It's much steeper than the other two. The graph for small chips comes horizontal more quickly, showing the reaction stops sooner. And lastly, although reactions occur at different speeds, we always get the same amount of carbon dioxide being produced. So all the um, experiments will end up at the same point. Right, now how do we go about scoring well on our graph? Okay, number seven, communicate the findings, experimental activities using appropriate technical language, relevant calculations and graphs. Here's a graph, you saw this a minute ago for the investigation. And here's some key, point, key points, whenever you're drawing any graph, these are key points you might consider. Okay, first of all, the graph must occupy at least half of the available space. Secondly, if possible, the independent variable should go on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. Both scales should be laid out so they are evenly spread. Both axes correctly labelled, change in mass of conical flask and time in seconds, including units. All points plotted correctly. If it's possible to align the best fit. And then also do a key for the different lines as we have here. Experimental skill number eight. Use scientific knowledge and understanding to analyse, interpret data, draw conclusions from experimental activities that are consistent with the evidence. So, what can we conclude from this investigation? Well, the data shows us, first of all, that the flask contains the small chips, shown here in red on the graph, lost mass quicker than the flask containing medium or large chips. 
This means that carbon dioxide was produced more quickly when using small chips. And you can also say, conversely, the flask containing the large chips lost mass slower than the other two. So there's our conclusion. What scientific knowledge have we got? Well, it's all to do with the surface area. Reactions between solids and liquids happen faster if solids are present in many small pieces rather than a few big ones. With small pieces, the surface area and contact with the liquid is much greater. We can see that over here. Now here, we've got one big lump, solid lump. Look at particles in red, can't get the particles in the middle of the solid. When we break up that solid lump into smaller lumps, okay, same mass, but smaller lumps, liquid particles can now get to many, many more solid particles, which is why the smaller chips reacted faster than the larger chips. Now this means the frequency of successful collisions increases as the surface area of the solid increases, and the practical application of this is in your car. Catalytic converters in cars have metals with very small surfaces to move harmful substances such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, very small surfaces they are able to move many more gas particles. Last thing I think about, number nine, the last experimental skill, we've got to assess the reliability of any experimental activity. So, this graph here is not from the data we had. I've just made this one up. It's a bit of an exaggeration, really, because you can see there, the X there in the red circle marks what we call an anomalous result. Okay? Let's look at the data. Were there any anomalous results? We can say here, yes, there was. Now, if you've just produced one set of results, the problem is you cannot be sure you haven't made a mistake somewhere. Now, experiments should be repeated, check reliability. Reliable results should be in close agreement. Do you need to discard any results? Well, let's have a look at a results table. Again, one I've just um, made up. It's not one from the experiment I described. But you can see here the figures in red are most certainly anomalous results. Look, minus 0.85, minus 0.5, 0.77, no way, way out. And over here, 0 0.31, 0 0.22, 0 0.33, again, that's anomalous. Now, in this table of results, the um, measurements replicated three times and the mean has been calculated. Now notice how where the result is in red, as in here, we exclude that from the calculation of the mean. So the mean is 0.85, over here the mean is 0.32. Okay? So look out for your anomalous results. Well that's a very brief description there of the experimental skills you need in practical science. Hope it's made um, sense to you. If you have any questions please get back to me and I look forward to speaking to you in another video very soon. So bye-bye for now.